AutoBleam Beta version 2 has just been released and I'm going to show you guys how to upgrade from Beta 1 to Beta 2. This is Steve from Nostalgia and let's get started. Alright guys, so for beta version 2, it's a really simple install. We don't need to do very much at all. All we need to do is go on over to the GitHub page where we've got our uh, release download. And as always, I will leave the download link in the description down below. So if we scroll on down, we can take a look at all the different uh, updates that have happened. There's a lot of small things that they've corrected in the beta 2. Nothing really major, but there are a couple cool features here and there, and I definitely recommend you guys upgrade from your beta 1 to beta 2. I've been getting a lot of questions about compatibility and some people having some bad experiences with crashing, and that is not because of the actual AutoBleam build itself. What that's likely related to is a power issue from your USB port. So as you guys know, the uh, USB ports on the front of the PlayStation Classic console are limited in terms of their output, and the USB drives often need more than what they are able to output, so you end up with some compatibility issues, some complete and total crashes, those types of things. So if you are experiencing that, I do want to mention to you guys, again, it's not, it's not the build itself, it's likely a USB compatibility issue. So really quickly, we're just going to take a peek at some of the updates that are now available through the Beta 2 release. So the big one is that the power button is now handled in the correct way. So that means that it will work to power down the console. It is locked when you're in game to prevent any data corruption. So that's really cool. That just means that, you know, if you're playing a game and your console's on your desk or on the floor, you can't accidentally hit it, hit the power button, and then have your uh, have your console end up corrupted. So that that's pretty cool that they put in like a fail safe feature in there. And as with the beta release, it does say that you're still able to uh, power off your console holding the uh, L2 and R2 buttons in the menu. Another cool feature that is available in the Evo UI build is that you can now select jewel case borders. And if you guys aren't sure what that means, rather than just having your stock image on your PlayStation Classic game, uh, it'll actually have a jewel case. So it'll look like the actual game case is there. So another really awesome feature that they've got going on right now, and this is something that I had to make in a, in a previous video when you were kind of going from 3D artwork to 2D artwork. What they've implemented now is right in the game manager screen. Uh, apparently, if you press the triangle button, it'll rescan all the covers again, so you'll get the latest version of the covers from the database on that build. So that's a nice feature, so you don't actually have to plug in your USB drive into your computer and delete PNG files anymore. You can do it right from right within the console. That's, that's a fantastic feature. Uh, and that's nice. Uh, the reason why you're gonna wanna do that is because it looks as though they have gone ahead and updated the NTSC U cover database with high quality artwork. Uh, they're saying in here it's probably the final version, um, but what that sounds to me like is you're gonna be getting high res images. You're not gonna be getting some of those pixelated ugly pictures for certain games, so that's really cool. I love to see that there. So a couple other cool features that we've got here is the ability to delete unused resume points. So that's nice. You're also going to get support for OGG file music in the theme. So previously you were you were pretty bound with uh, the format of music that had to be available for any custom themes. Now they're allowing for OGG file type music in the themes. So the other thing that they've got in there in regards to music is that they've got the support to override custom music and play whatever music you want, assuming they're OGG files. Uh, it says that one royalty-free music file is going to be included, um, but you can essentially add multiple files in there and you can play whatever one you want. So that's also a really nice feature to have. So it looks like what they've done is they've also removed a bunch of themes out of the package and the reason that they're doing that is so that way they can reduce the package size and give users more flexibility in customizing the systems that they've got. Uh, they're going to leave a link right over here. It's called autobleam.tk. You can go to that website and you can actually pick and choose whatever themes you want and load them in yourself. Uh, and that'll kind of give you the ability to download a smaller file, it takes up less space on your USB drive, and you can kind of pick and choose whatever themes you want or if you don't want any other themes you're just happy with one specific theme you just load up the theme you want and, then, and that's the end of it for you and one of the biggest features that people were having some trouble with was resume points not working on multi-disc games so that bug has been fixed so now you are able to go ahead and play your multi-disc games when you're in disc 2 or disc 3 whatever it happens to be and you create a save point 
you will now be able to resume from that save point in the proper disc properly. So that's that's really good. I'm glad to, uh, I'm glad to see that that's there because I was getting a ton of questions, a ton of co- ton of comments, and a ton of messages about that specifically. So now we know that in AutoBleam, it is now corrected. You can now have resume points working properly with multi-disc games. So there's still a few things that they're working on. Uh, they've got the memory card manager, and Evo is still. Yeah, working progress. It says missing bits in language translations, so the translations aren't going to be 100% perfect, but again, they are working on that. And then it says general check if everything is just uh, is not missing. So I guess what that means is that they are just making sure that nothing is missing. If there's any other bugs, they're still working on those sort of things. But it looks like we're getting pretty close to uh, a full release and we're going to be moving away from betas uh, pretty soon for the AutoBleam uh, 0.6 build. So that's that's really exciting. All right, so now what's left for us to do is to go ahead and download our beta 2. So we're going to scroll down to where all the downloads are. And again, as you can see, you've got a clean build, which will have none of the databases. You've got a full build, which will have all of the databases an NTSCJ for Japan region games, you've got NTSCU which is US region games, and then you've got a PAL-E which is going to be your uh, your PAL region games. Uh, for me, I'm just going to go ahead and download the NTSCU uh, zip file. Now if you are somebody who wants to play Japan region games or PAL region games, you may as well download the full zip, but uh, for me I don't use any of the other region games, I just use US region games, so I'm going to download this one. I'm going to go ahead and save that right to the desktop, and it won't take long at all, it just pops down. We're going to go ahead and minimize our web browser, and I'm going to extract the AutoBleam Beta 2. Perfect, so here it is. We're going to go ahead and open up that folder to take a peek and see what's inside of it. And as you can see, we've got a payload folder, we've got an AutoBleam folder, a games folder, and a theme folder. So that's really good. What we need to do is pop our USB drive into our computer, mine already is, and we need to open that up as well. And it's right here, and we're going to go ahead and stick that over to the side. And just like with every other AutoBleam update or install, it's super easy. If this is your first time and you're actually doing this uh, without an upgrade, you just highlight everything and copy it over to your blank USB drive. Again, you need to make sure it's formatted with the title Sony all caps and in FAT32. Uh, And if this is just an upgrade, all you got to do is click on everything here and just drag it over and it will copy it over. Uh, If you get a message that says that it uh, has a bunch of files that have the same name, do you want to replace them? The answer to that is yes, so you go ahead and click uh, allow it to replace. Um, But until then, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and fast forward through this. All right, awesome. So now that that's done, what we're going to go ahead and do is close out of the uh, folder with the beta release and our USB drive can also be closed. Uh, What we need to do is pop our USB drive into our PlayStation Classic and turn it on. Uh, And as always, it's always best practice to make sure that the power cord is unplugged before you pop your USB drive in. So pop your USB drive in, then power on your console with the power cord and the power button. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and we're going to switch over to the PlayStation Classic screen now. All right, guys, so here we are. Uh, Just a couple things that I wanted to show you guys really quickly. Uh, Everything does look pretty much the same. When we press start, it'll load up AutoBleam, but I do wanna show you guys something in the options. If we hit the select option, uh, you're gonna see there's a bunch of different things in here. So we've got music, which I'm going to go ahead and set up as the stock music that they have in there, uh, which is this Alan Walker dash fade release. It's an OGG file. And this is where you could actually go ahead and change whatever music file you want. So if you were to load up multiple OGG files, uh, what you would do then is put them onto your USB drive in the correct folder. And then from here, you could just toggle between what you wanted. If you don't want any music, you could go ahead and just leave it at the default. Um, Or you can go ahead and filter through and find the song that you want. And if you want 10 songs on there and you just want to change it up, depending on what your mood is that day, you can go ahead and do it this way. You can see right over here, you've got an option to toggle internal games on and off. So I like to leave them on. Here's our widescreen option that we've talked about before. You've got uh, a quick boot, which just changes the amount of time that it takes for the quick boot. Uh, I'm just gonna leave that off for now. You've got the option uh, as well in the settings here to boot directly into RetroArch uh, if that's what you want to do. So if you don't want to use AutoBleam and you just wanna go straight into RetroArch, you can actually set it up. So that way when you press, or when you power on your console, it goes right into RetroArch, but I'm gonna leave it to to go into the UI. 
You've got the option to turn off background music altogether. So if you don't want background music, you can turn that off. And then you've got your GFX filter. Make sure you leave that on. Uh, and then you've also got the option to show RetroArch. So some people don't use RetroArch at all. And you can go ahead and remove that right from the menu. And then of course you can also remove the advanced options. Um, but what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna shoot over to AutoBleam. I'm gonna load that up. And you can see in here, we've got the jewel cases that is being displayed for our console uh, for every single game. So that's actually really neat. Uh, that includes the built-in games. So this is a filter that goes over top of the games, which is really neat. Now, one thing that I do want to mention, as you can see, we've got some really poor artwork for some of the uh, some of the games here. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to go back out into the main option. We're going to go to the L1 advanced options, and we're going to go into our game manager. And in here, we should be able to rescan. So as you can see here, on the bottom of the screen, we've got select, we've got triangle equals flush covers, and then we've got uh, circle to close. Flush covers, what that's gonna do is it's gonna rescan all of our games and it's gonna give us the latest database artwork. So in this case, we're supposed to get some higher quality uh, artwork. So we're gonna go ahead and press triangle. And it's gonna say, are you sure you wanna do this? I do wanna mention if you've loaded custom cover art, you don't wanna do this because what it'll do is it'll delete all of your custom cover art and it'll replace it with the stock database artwork. So just keep that in mind. Uh, I don't use custom cover art, so I'm gonna go ahead and press the X button to confirm. And it's going to say games changed, press X to scan. We're gonna hit X. It's gonna update the database file. 69 games scanned, and now if we pop back into AutoBleam, we should see, yeah, you can see right away that the artwork is much better. So this one specifically, the X-Men Mutant Academy was terrible artwork as you guys saw previously, and now we have much cleaner artwork. It looks much better. And that would be the same for pretty much everything. Everything's gonna be much better quality artwork. Uh, everything's gonna be high res, so that looks much better that way. Another cool feature here is, as you can see, there is the jewel case there, um, but they've actually added a lot of other filters. So um, we can go in and we can actually take a look at the cover style, uh, which says default. And if you want it to be clean, you can go ahead and select clean and press back. And what that's going to do, it'll have the jewel case. And on the left side, you can kind of see it. It says PlayStation. If we go back into settings and we change it from clean to bullet hole, we're gonna go ahead and press back there. And you can see now we've got the classic PlayStation artwork that is going up the side. And then you can also see in the bottom right hand corner that it looks like a bullet uh, went through the case. And they've got a ton of different features. So you can go ahead and play around. Um, they've got clean, cracks, new. Um, the new is pretty cool. The pre-owned is really cool. I'll show you both of those. So for the new, you can see in there, it looks like the games have like a plastic wrap over top of them and then they've got a new barcode sticker. Uh, and then you can even go in and uh, go with the pre-owned. So you're gonna have uh, what looks like uh, GameStop. So you're gonna have a pre-owned uh, look. It looks a little bit scratched up, looks a little bit beaten up and then it's got a GameStop sticker in the top right hand corner, which is absolutely hilarious. So that's a, that's a cool way to, uh, to set up your, uh, your games to look. It looks pretty funny though. Definitely, that looks awesome. But yeah, that's pretty much it for uh, for this new Beta 2 release. Definitely something I would recommend installing. You just get a couple new features and it's something to tide you over until we get a full release coming out. So definitely you're gonna wanna do that. Uh, the nice thing about that is it, uh, it allows, when you get the jewel cases set up, it allows for the built-in games to look less like they're standing out. Um, if you guys recall previously, all of the games that you would have loaded have the PlayStation logo running along the side of the image, whereas the pre-built-in ones don't. But when you get these jewel cases loaded up, it, you barely notice it. It actually makes it blend in a lot better. So that's definitely a, a definitely a welcome feature. But uh, again, I don't have much else for you uh, in terms of different features for this video. Thank you guys so very much for watching. Make sure to thumbs up uh, the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll talk to you guys again real soon.